Hey Waffle Gang, I do hope you are well. My name is Mark and today we're checking out some more Reddit stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider in a like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. And let's crack on with today's first story. Much love guys. Now today's first story comes from OK Bandicoot. 2349 saying am i the arsehole for giving my girlfriend an ultimatum about her male best friend i 28 male have been dating my girlfriend sarah 26 female for just over a year now and while i love her there's one thing that's been eating at me since the very beginning her relationship with her male best friend jake 27 male jake has been sarah's ride or die since college and i knew from the start that they were close but what I didn't realize was how much it would impact our relationship. I've always tried to be the chill, trusting boyfriend. I don't want to be the guy who's threatened by a platonic friendship. But honestly, it's gotten to the point where I feel like I'm the third wheel in my own relationship. Jake and Sarah are practically inseparable. They hang out multiple times a week. Dinners, movie nights, spontaneous late night drives. And I'm usually not even invited. If I try to join... It's awkward, like I'm crashing their private joke-filled world that I'm not a part of. It stings, but I try to let it go for the sake of keeping the peace. But then things started to cross a line. Jake texts her constantly, even when we're together on dates. It's not just casual stuff either. He calls her babe and sweetheart, and when I brought this up to Sarah, she laughed and said it was just their thing, and it didn't mean anything. Apparently, they've been calling each other that for years. But to me, it feels like there's more to it. Who calls their best friend babe when they're in a relationship? Then there was the night I stayed over at her place and woke up at 2am to find Sarah on FaceTime with Jake. She was giggling like a schoolgirl, whispering so she wouldn't wake me. When I asked her about it the next morning, she brushed it off saying Jake needed someone to talk to. But what about me? Am I just here as background noise while she stays emotionally tethered to this guy? The final straw came last weekend. Sarah and I had been planning a special weekend getaway for our one year anniversary, something we'd been looking forward to for months. But out of nowhere, Jake invites her to a concert the same weekend. Sarah asked me if we could postpone our anniversary trip so she could go with Jake instead because it's a band they both absolutely love. I was floored. Our anniversary, something we'd been planning for months, could just be rescheduled for Jake. It was like I didn't even matter. I told her that this was too much and asked her to set some clear boundaries with Jake. Like no more pet names, no more hanging out one-on-one -on -one all the time and definitely no more prioritizing him over our relationship. She blew up at me, calling me controlling and insecure. She even said, you knew Jake was a part of my life when we started dating. Why are you trying to change me now? Things got worse when Jake apparently told her that I was being toxic and trying to manipulate her. Sarah is siding with him, saying I'm overreacting that nothing has ever happened between them. She's now furious with me for giving her an ultimatum, and all I really asked for was some boundaries that would make me feel like I'm her boyfriend, not just a side character in her life with Jake. Now, Sarah's given me the silent treatment, and I'm starting to feel like I've somehow become the villain in my own relationship. Am I losing my mind here? I'm not asking her to drop Jake completely, just to prioritize us and respect our relationship. But maybe I've been unreasonable. So Reddit, am I the asshole for asking my girlfriend to set boundaries with her male best friend? Or is this friendship way too close for comfort? Absolutely not the asshole in this situation. Well, I don't think giving an ultimatum is going to fix anything, but I would certainly be checking out of this relationship. It certainly just sounds like her and Jake are together at this point. So, you know, I would just be taking a step back and saying, you know, you, you guys should just be together at this point. And I mean, you could give the ultimatum, but I just don't think it's going to achieve anything significant at this point. You're just going to continue to be called controlling, etc. Iggy says, um, do everyone a favor and end this thing now. You'll be doing Sarah a favor. She can have Jake. You'll be doing Jake a favor. He can have Sarah. Most of all, you'll be doing yourself a huge favor because you can find someone who sees you as a ride or die and someone who is actually loyal to you because... After all, loyalty is the single most important factor in friendship. Not being nice or liking the same things. Sarah does not believe she needs to be loyal to you. 
You know how I know. We can only truly know what we believe versus what we think we believe by watching how we act. Our actions speak volumes. You must be joking, says not the asshole. First point, Jake can have an opinion, but that is not relevant to your relationship. Honestly, it sounds like they are dating. I think you giving an ultimatum was never going to end good for you. Honestly, you know he is her number one priority. Even if she doesn't say it in words, she declares it in all her actions. I think fundamentally, Jake is the third person in your relationship and he will always win. If you can handle that, stay. If not, go and find your ride or die person. Life is too short to be uncomfortable and frustrated in your romantic relationship after a year. Disastrous Machine says you are not losing your mind. Their friendship and connection is not a normal friendship behavior when you have a boyfriend. She doesn't prioritize you. She prioritizes him. And it is an old saying. You should not judge by their words, but look to their action. Her action tells you clearly that you are not as important. So treat yourself right and leave her. You're not toxic. She is. Decent Bandicoot says you should say this. So according to Jake, I'm toxic and manipulative. Is that what he says about all your boyfriends who get sick of his nice guy routine of manipulating you to get your boyfriends to break up? Jake knew about our plans. He purposely got tickets to see who you would choose. You chose. I hope you're happy with the freak. Ben says, not the asshole and move on. You don't need any more of this dumpster fire of a relationship. And one more comment which says, not the asshole. Your girlfriend is not behaving like she's in a committed relationship. I'm saying this as a woman married for 23 years and both my husband and I have friendships of the opposite sex and neither of us disrespect each other with or to our friends because we respect and love each other. I would never ever speak to my husband the way your girlfriend spoke to you, nor would I change special plans with him to be with someone else. All you did was ask your girlfriend to prioritize you and your relationship ahead of her friendship with Jake, as it should have been. And furthermore, Jake is actively undermining your relationship and your position as a man and partner. Honestly, you deserve a lot better than what you're getting in this relationship. As a woman and as a mum of three adult sons, I'm saying to you, this woman doesn't have your best interest at heart. She doesn't deserve you and please do not waste any more of your life on her. There are good women who appreciate good, loving and kind men and that's what you deserve. You deserve someone who shares the same relationship goals and the same dreams and life plans as you. And trust me, she's out there, but this girl is not the one. I'm sorry you're hurting. This mama says dump her and Jake and keep it moving. Big hugs. So OP came in with her update and said, hey Reddit, I'm back with an update. And let me just say, it didn't turn out how I expected at all. I first want to thank you for all the amazing support you have given me. After reading over the comments and talking to some of you guys, I'd made up my mind. I was done being second place in my own relationship and I was ready to walk away. But what happened next surprised me. Saturday night, Sarah came over to talk. I was prepared to have the breakup conversation, but before I could get a word in, she told me something unexpected. She had cancelled the concert plans with Jake. She said that after our last conversation, she realized how serious I was and it made her think about everything. She told me she had been selfish, that she had been taking our relationship for granted. She said she had told Jake she couldn't go to the concert and instead, she wanted to spend the weekend with me. No distractions, no third wheels, just us. I was honestly shocked. Part of me didn't believe it. For months, I'd been asking her to set boundaries with Jake and suddenly, she was doing it. It felt surreal, like a last minute effort to save something that was already broken. But she seemed sincere. She apologized, not just for the concert situation, but for all the time she had ignored my feelings, dismissed my concerns and prioritized Jake over us. She admitted she had been blind to how much it hurt me and said she didn't want to lose me. It was emotional. She was crying and I could see how much it scared her that I was about to walk away. For the first time in a long time, it felt like she was choosing me. But here's the thing. As much as I appreciated her apology, it didn't magically fix everything. I told her that while cancelling the concert was a good step, it didn't erase all the hurt. I still felt like I had been competing with Jake for too long and trust once broken is hard to rebuild. We ended up spending the weekend together as planned. We didn't go on the big anniversary trip, but we stayed in, cooked together and had long conversations about everything. Our relationship, Jake, the future. It was a roller coaster of emotions. There were moments where I felt like maybe we could make this work, but also moments where the damage felt too deep to repair. By today, I was emotionally drained. 
Sarah seemed to think things were heading in the right direction, but I still wasn't sure. I needed space to think, so I told her that we should take a break, give each other some time to reflect and see if this relationship was something we both wanted to fight for. She didn't take it well. She cried again, begged me not to go, said she had proved to me that she was serious about changing, but I needed to be alone, to clear my head without the constant push and pull of emotions. So I left. I haven't spoken to her since. We agreed to give it a couple of weeks before we decide anything, but to be honest, I'm still leaning towards ending things for good. Could she really have set boundaries with Jake after everything? I find this hard to believe after months of me begging. I feel like I've already checked out of the relationship. And while the efforts are appreciated, I can't shake the feeling that it's too little, too late. I'll always care about Sarah, but this whole situation has made me realize how important it is to be with someone who values and respects you from the beginning. Someone who doesn't make you feel like you have to compete for their attention. You all think she might have cheated on me with Jake. So Reddit, I ask, should I give her another chance or should I go through with the breakup? That's a difficult one that I think only you're going to be able to answer in the end. You know all the behaviors around her. We're reading a very small part of your life. So for me reading it, I would say, you know, like I would feel for myself and this is purely for me that, you know, the trust isn't there. Would I really want to battle for this? I'm not sure, but maybe that is harsh. Maybe you do give it that two weeks and see how you feel then. But again, if you're saying that you're already checked out of the relationship, why put yourself through it even more? In the end, it's got to be changed behavior that's going to make or break this relationship. You can say all the words that you want, but if nothing changes in the end, if it starts to creep back in, you're going to end up back in the same position. In my mind, I'm finding it really difficult that she's going to go from this closeness with Jake to having boundaries in place, etc., etc., just like that. I just can't see it happening. But hey, who am I? Barkley Kraken said on the back of this one, it said, sounds like she's found your Reddit to me. And I mean, it did come out of nowhere, didn't it? And it's just like, wouldn't be surprising, but hey. <laughs> Global Fact says, I would take the full two weeks and just rest. I know this sounds silly, but let your subconscious mind work through it. Eat well, get lots of rest, read or watch movies. Just be. At the end of two weeks, do a gut check and see where you are. Waxed Gooch, <laughs> what a name, says, something happened. Nobody does a 180 that fast without something happening. I suspect she finally asked Jake to make it official and he backed out. Now she's afraid of being alone. Whatever. She's not loyal either way. The fact that I've come to this is too much. And one more comment from Buddy who says something is definitely rotten in Denmark. No way she just changed her tune that quickly. Spontaneous late night drives? Are you kidding me? And Jake just accepted boundaries after he was telling her you were toxic and they've had this relationship for years. Not buying it. It appears you've been the third wheel and Jake probably did drop her, which, sorry to say, makes you second choice again. No offense. Trust your instincts and move on. If you stay, you'll always have that feeling that you were taken advantage of. And when is the other shoe going to drop? But now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? What do you think OP should do? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. And let's move on to another story. Now, our next story comes from a throwaway account from the Relationship Advice subreddit. And it says, My boyfriend blocked me for renewing my lease. What can I do to make things up to him? I'm hurt and betrayed. My boyfriend is a great person and we've been together for three years. My boyfriend is very frugal. I would say too frugal. He graduated with a degree in computer science and had been making decent money since he graduated. When he graduated, he used the FHA loan for a humble but small townhome. I'm someone who differs in that I like the luxury. Last year, I got a nice high-rise apartment in a major metropolitan area and signed a 14-month lease. With that, my rent was $4,100 a month. Eventually, with other bills, I was not able to afford it. My boyfriend's mortgage is really cheap because his place is extremely cheap. Mind you, his townhouse is only a two-bedroom. My apartment is only a one-bedroom, but that's what you'd expect. You're paying for the view. It's near the top, the concierge, and the luxury experience. My boyfriend and I had a talk because I needed his help. He would cover half my rent, and then I would either move in with him or get a cheaper apartment. 
I could even stay in the same apartment and switch to one of the cheaper ones. I would have tried to move in with him, but not at his place. He agreed that he could move, but we still couldn't find a place that works for both of us because he's so cheap. Anyway, I realized him and I will be getting married soon, so it's better to renew my lease and enjoy the high-rise luxury for one more year. I was dreading on telling him, but last night I told him. He was pissed. He said, so you expect me to pay half your rent again? I told him, well, obviously. He said, have you considered I like nice things too, but it's hard to do that when I'm sending you $2,500 a month. He said, I would work with you if you were just bad at managing your personal finances and try to teach you. He told me it's worse than that and that I'm selfish and trying to take advantage of him. I was angry at him accusing me of trying to take advantage of him. That's not true of fucking at all. I love him and the fact that he said that hurt. He just hung up and blocked me everywhere. I'm going to head to his townhouse today so we can talk about this. Any suggestions? <laughs> I hope he came with it. <laughs> came in with an edit straight away saying, I'm, I'm taking accountability and going to cancel the lease. So you can imagine where these comments are going to go. The entitlement is going off the scale on this one. It was when the post started and it said like, I'm hurt and betrayed. Yet, yet you sneakily renewed your lease, expected him to continue to pay $2,500 a month. And then your all shocked Pikachu face that he thinks that you're taking advantage of him. Of course you are. But Jess says, so you aren't able to pay your rent by yourself. You asked your boyfriend to save your ass. He did with a condition that you find a cheaper place or move in with him. You decided to renew the rent that you can't afford without telling him. And you expect him to keep paying for half your rent. And somehow he's the one at fault. And you're the one mad about the situation. You are kidding, right? This can't be real. Moggy Man says, yikes, with all due respect, OP, you come off as pretty entitled here. Shelling out $4,100 for a one-bedroom high-rise apartment just for the luxury aspect is pretty telling. More telling is your boyfriend paying for half of that when you say yourself he is pretty frugal and has a home. And you saying, well, obviously, when he asked if you expect him to pay half of your rent again for an extra year, which comes to $30,000. Little Wondery blocked you, quite frankly, and you have the audacity to feel hurt and betrayed. Wow. Moose Planer says, A lot of people reading this don't even make 50k a year, much less than to have that to spend on just rent alone. So don't expect much sympathy. We're in the middle of a rent crisis here after all. Anyway, your boyfriend is entirely correct. I was prepared to take your side because couples should deal with problems rather than block their partners, which is usually a manipulative act. But in this case, you found the one situation where it's completely in the right. Congratulations, I guess. It's because you are now relying on his contribution and expect him to be okay with that in perpetuity. If this is how you are with money now, I'm quite certain he's having second and third thoughts about marrying you. I'm not sure what advice you're expecting here. Opie says, I was wrong and that's why I take full accountability. Him blocking me doesn't help us get to any real solutions. I'm going over to his place today so we can have a real conversation. I was looking for advice on how to approach this conversation. I think I'll address him blocking me at a later date and just focus on apologizing for renewing my lease without telling him. Scottish Sky says, if I was you, I wouldn't be expecting any help with rent from him. So you better also add in the conversation how you plan to come up with that money on your own or you'll more than likely end up very single by the end of that conversation. Opie says, that's what I'm going to do. I used to be a bartender. I can start doing that after work. I work remotely so I can get a second job after work, even if I prefer not to. Opie then came in with their update and said, thank you for the very few encouraging comments. <laughs> I'm not sure where those were. And said, said, we're still together. We had a very long talk yesterday. He feels betrayed and said, this was a huge setback. He said, one, I'm financially irresponsible because I can make too much money right now to need to be financed. Two, he thinks I've been using him. That still hurts. I told him I haven't and I love him and I've had opportunity to date men that make more money than him, but I want him. He laid out some conditions. One, therapy, which I thought was an odd request, but agreed to it, both individual and together. Two, I speak to a financial planner and follow their budget. He said they do that for free. He said I need to show him I want him for more than his money because he's seriously doubting that and he's not sponsoring me anymore. And the comments continued on OP. Toke says, 
Sometimes I read these am I the arsehole posts and just wish they would get their ass kicked because you can just tell no amount of words will make them understand they're doing anything wrong. Maybe having the experience of spending thousands to replace a few teeth will enlighten them of what a financial burden is. Salty Danger Hand says, how the fuck can you actually think you're not using him? I'd better renew my lease so I can enjoy another year of this and just expecting him to pay for it when it literally turned you into a liar. You promised him, you made a deal. Then you decided he should pay an obscene amount of money to keep you in luxury you cannot afford and clearly don't deserve because you wanted it. That's the definition of using. I'd have laughed in your face and kicked you to the curb. Figure out how to pay for it your damn self. You're single now. Dude's going to have a bad time. You're an awful person. Beautiful Mistake says, for real, I would have dumped her behind immediately, especially after the I've had opportunities to date men that make more money than you. Shit comment. I mean, lucky him, right? Shake my head. What a dumpster fire of a human. Rainbow Bright isn't punk says, seriously, I would have been all, then go date them. The bank is closed. The re this relationship won't last. She won't follow a budget and will end up being mad about it and blaming him. You can already tell therapy won't do anything for her. And you know, I felt exactly the same that this relationship isn't going to last for those reasons that the comment said and because she's expecting like a different standard of life. Always going to be expecting more and at whose cost. But what do you guys make of this situation? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. Now, just a huge thank you for being here today. Get involved in the stories, your love, your support, your time always means the absolute world to me. So thank you so, so much. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Take care and much love.